fail. Being a fitness teacher and motivator in the classroom with groups of students for over 30 years has allowed me an opportunity to change lives, and I'm so grateful for this work that I have been blessed to do as my career. The fun part about teaching is that even though I may see the same people and teach common exercises every day, when you combine the energy of the group and my own personal energy, each class becomes an island unto itself, unique, fresh, exciting, and bold. What a teacher does or says in any particular moment can enhance or deduct from the goal, which is for me to get as much as I can out of each movement from each student with each and every breath that they take in that session, challenging them as well as myself to be totally present and in the moment. In order to achieve this paradigm on a consistent basis, I always try to follow two rules of thumb which also apply to all life's challenges in general. Rule number one, when challenged in anything, create, establish, and sustain a single-minded focus. With exercise in particular, it is necessary to clear your mind of your thoughts, focus on your breath, listen to the teacher's cues, and react to those cues without overthinking. To check your ego at the door and shine the light on the deeper power, which is your wisdom. Depending on your past history with movement challenges, you may be hardwired to compete and win, feeling disappointed or defeated with anything less than perfection. And because of this approach to exercise, classically, the weekend warrior on a Saturday becomes a physical therapy patient on a Monday. As a PE teacher in the public school system in the early 80s, I would see how the young mind is taught to see movement as a sport or competitive activity. PE classes, or at least the ones that I taught, were team sport oriented. So the athlete always came in first, the out of shape kid always came in last, they were the last one chosen on the team and the first one to bring in a doctor's note excusing them from gym class. So much for building self-esteem. Fast forward to adult life. The former athlete still wants to compete and the out of shape kid still wants to avoid. The dilemma is that movement is needed in order to stay healthy and most doctors will tell you that you need to exercise in order to stay proactive with all health matters. So therein lies the conundrum for those who do, are not motivated to move. A key learning here is that competitive sports and movement practice are not necessarily the same thing. It's true that it's better than nothing to move a few times a week by walking on a treadmill or pedaling a stationary bike while reading the Wall Street Journal or watching CNN. But the rewards of a practice like this are most times short-lived and the practice is easily abandoned due to a lack of substance, almost like a fast food cheeseburger. Remember, if it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. Movements are complex in nature, and they may be intimidating at first and require more effort to learn, but with a focused and concentrated mind, improvements are inevitable and they're very satisfying. It takes courage and acceptance of your own personal insecurities and vulnerabilities, to put yourself out there on a limb with a new movement activity. Are you okay with perhaps looking initially a little uncoordinated with a new physical challenge? Or does your ego stop you from learning anything new in public? Ironically, with exercise, what we need the most is usually what we like the least. And we would rather be doing something that we're good at because we enjoy it more. But if we only gave ourselves a chance to learn, grow, and adapt, there could be a whole new experience waiting for you on the other side of the movement challenge. So that leads me to my rule number two. Make your movement practice a part of your lifestyle. When you approach movement from a place of wisdom and practice with consistency, perseverance, and patience over time, the challenges that you embrace will reward you with the positive changes that you desire. Your newly established practice becomes the fabric of your life, a new constitution, if you will, of which you can now take pride. And the best part of it is that if you lose your way and fall off the wagon, like most of us do periodically, 
the memory of what it felt like to be proud of something becomes your motivation to get back on it. With any movement practice, to see results, you truly need to challenge yourself. Because if you don't challenge yourself, you don't change yourself. This quote that is the topic of my talk this morning had an organic birth and came out of my mouth out of sheer frustration in one class that I was unable to motivate the students to work hard. And it worked. They worked harder when I said that to them. When we are challenged, as my good friend Tim Dobbins would say in his book titled Steppin' Up, we have three choices. We can step back, we can step aside, or we can step up. In each choice lies a result and creates a change. But is it the change that you're looking for? Exercise improves your lifestyle, your well-being, and your overall holistic health. If you can just get out of your own way and step up. As we try to keep our lives under control, you can count on eventually something going out of control. Without the proper life tools, such as mindfulness and intuition, panic could set in, causing a depressing downward spiral. Control is a myth that falsely comforts our psyche, which makes it even more important and helpful to work on these life tools for survival. We must learn to call on our inner strength to embrace the changes and challenges placed before us. As the saying goes, you can't stop the wind, but you can navigate by learning how to work the sails. So what is motivation? Where does it come from? When I hold a student in a two-minute plank, I ask them, if I put a $10,000 check in front of you, would you keep your knees off the floor for two minutes? My thinking is yes, they would. But without this extrinsic motivation, because I'm not that rich, the challenge is to produce motivation that comes from the inside out. Intrinsic motivation is the key phrase here. So where do we find that elusive motivational switch to flip that changes us from lethargic couch potato to a motivated mover? I challenge you to consider your lifestyle and make movement a part of your lifestyle as a means of maximizing your life experiences day in and day out. In exercise, as I mentioned already, you must start from a place of wisdom and instead of ego. Be humble, be easy on yourself. Avoid focusing on your frustrations or your limitations. Because the more you focus on them, the bigger they become. Instead, focus on blessings, being grateful, having trust. Overthinking anything, but especially movement, makes you your own worst enemy. To cultivate and follow the inner voice of wisdom only comes when we learn to quiet the mind, to abandon the temporary, at least temporarily, the mental chatter and turn our attention to single-minded focus, your breath. Single-minded focus is a lost art these days. We live in a world of multitasking challenges, multiple open windows on the computer, choices of apps on the mobile device, picture in picture on the TV, etc. To be still with a focus on breath and then to move from a place of intuitive energy is to work, it's the work and the challenge that we face multiple times a day. Embracing these challenges is only possible when the pathway for this integration is reestablished through mindfulness as well as an escalation of our own personal level of consciousness. Not everyone wants to change, but the only thing that we can depend on in life is change. In conclusion, my advice is to consider embracing movement as an essential part of being alive, living in your body and connecting to those around you. Enjoy the lost art of single-minded focus on a daily basis through a moving meditation. I would selfishly suggest that you come to Exhale, take a Core Fusion class with me, or get one of our 11 DVDs that my wife Elizabeth Halftap and I have produced over the years, or a new bar fitness book that we have coming out in November. But if none of those options work for you, then go out and take a long walk with purpose. When you have a regular movement practice, you are taking control of a priority in your life. Be open to change. Since change is inevitable, so it's best to seize the moment, challenge yourself to manifest that change into a life-enhancing step in a positive direction. Thank you very much.